This is one of the most hyped up sneakers of all time. It's consistently sold up to $2,500 on the resale market. So we're gonna cut this thing in half and run it through our test to see how Travis Scott made this shoe so popular above and beyond other rappers collaborations. Is it actually better materials than regular Jordan 1s or is it just mental gymnastics trying to justify spending more, basically a full paycheck on a pair of sneakers? And why is the resale sneaker market slowly collapsing? Well, to understand why Travis Scott made this so popular, you have to kind of understand Travis Scott. So who is he and why did he make these so popular? Well, Travis Scott is an American rapper, singer, songwriter, and recording producer. And throughout his career, Travis Scott has achieved four number one hits on the US Billboard's Hot 100 chart, along with 80 total charted songs. And his relationship with Kylie Jenner has been a hot topic for the last six years. He's just one of the most influential men, not only in music, but in sneakers. And both of those industries kind of play off of each other to make this shoe so popular because from 2009 to 2011, he released several mixtapes under the several different groups where he met Kanye West and T.I. and was hired as an in-house producer for good music in 2012, where he started to rise to some stardom. So before he even started in the sneaker industry, he had several successful mixtapes and two successful albums. And then he first dipped his toe into the sneaker world in January of 2017, when Travis Scott collaborated with the fashion brand Helmet Lang on a high and low top sneakers, retailing for a steep $596 for the high tops and $395 for the low tops. Then the next year, 2017, Travis Scott first collaborates with Jordan on an unreleased family and friends exclusive Travis Scott X Jordan Turner LX, which features some pretty crazy color blocking. Then also in 2017, Travis and Nike also released some Air Force Ones that featured a detachable Nike swoosh, stash pocket, inverted Nike Air logo that was released to extreme popularity. Then in 2018, after a couple sneaker collaborations, he dropped his third, third album, Astral World, which was hugely popular and probably his most popular album to date. Then also that year in 2018, his first public Jordan collaboration releases the Travis Scott X Air Jordan 4 Cactus Jacks, which paid homage to his hometown of Houston, Texas, and was considered to be one of the best sneakers of 2018, all while on the music side of things, his number one hit, Sicko Mode, was still surging in the charts. Then after lightning struck with that Jordan 4, they tried it again with the Jordan 33s, but it did not do so well. Then after that miss in 2019, they went back to the drawing boards with the most OG platform, the Air Jordan 1. And before it was even released, it debuted on the feet of Adam, Le Adam Levine during the Super Bowl halftime show, which caused an absolute storm of interest and an unprecedented frenzy of people wanting those sneakers. They were finally released on May 11th, 2019, with instant success. One of the most popular sneakers one of the fastest selling sneakers in the entire decade with limited quantities, a popular rapper, popular shoes, popular platform with a unique twist with the reverse swoosh. It was an instant success. And because it was an instant success, the resale prices blew up $2,500 plus, and it remains one of the most expensive shoes to buy on the resale market. So this isn't even part of the ad, but I think it's really interesting how these brands like Factor ship fresh, but not frozen, frozen stuff straight to your front door. Cause he's like, how do you ship that without it completely melting and spoiling the food? Well, the way they do it is they line the boxes with these liners that are basically uh, these little uh, peanut packing that are insulating the entire box. Then on the inside, instead of just regular ice, I don't think this is frozen water because it's kind of a gel gelatinous kind of consistency for the bits that are frozen, but it's still predominantly frozen even after being shipped all the way to Utah, sitting on our desk for like several hours today and it's still frozen. It's kind of cool how they, they're able to do it. But for the actual ad, so this video is brought to you by Factor and Factor cuts the stress of meal planning and it, which takes the guesswork out of what to make for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And for me, I don't want to cook. I used to like cooking, but I'm so busy now. It takes so much time. It's actually not that cheap to cook, but with Factor, it comes to your door. Like I said, it's not frozen, it's fresh. You throw it in the microwave and it tastes really good. And I know it's like an ad, but it is actually really, really good. I've recommended it to some friends. Factor really helps me cut down on getting on the apps and having stuff delivered to my door that ends up costing two to three times as much as one of these meals costs. And this compared to fast food, they're worlds apart in flavor and nutrition and just the way you feel after eating them. And Factor meals arrive pre-prepared and ready to eat in just two minutes or less. Meal plans offer a variety of rotating weekly menus with 34 plus meal options that 36 plus add-ons like smoothies, keto shakes, desserts, and more. So use the links in my description or go to go.factor75.com and use the code POGROSEP50 for 50% off your first box and check the links in the description or scan this QR code with your phone. But does this actually have better materials than the regular Jordans or is it just this mental gymnastics by people hyping it up because of who it's associated with and these big numbers that people see? 
Well, what is this shoe? Well, the brand is Travis Scott X Air Jordan. The style is the one retro high OG Mocha. They weigh one pound, one ounce. They retailed originally for $175 and they're made in China. So what is this leather? Because that's the one thing that they might actually have different than all the other sneakers. And the one thing that Nike could upgrade. Well, right off the bat, it's pretty clear it's already a better leather than most Nike leather, which is most like Nike leathers. It's just a suede cut from a lower cross section of leather, just a byproduct of the higher quality leathers. And they put a fake plastic coating on top to make it look like that higher cross section of leather with the grain and that smooth texture, when in all reality, it's just plastic on top. Well, this leather is actually better because this is a new buck leather, which means it's in that higher cross section where that grain is just lightly sanded down to give it an even consistency and to give it that microfiber look. So it's already a significantly better cut of leather. And the grain is important to have inside of your leather because it's basically the glue that holds all those loose leather fibers together. And that's why Nike usually fakes the grain with plastic. And as for the thickness, it's 1.5 millimeters thick, so pretty average for sneakers. And then the other leathers, even though they might look like their typical leather for Nike with that plastic on top, they're actually not. It's not plastic, it's a pigment. And pigment is superior to plastic because plastic has all those flaws that everyone knows about where it separates from the leather underneath, it flakes off, it ages and cracks with time, where a pigmented top layer is literally just a microscopic thin layer of paint. And if you look at the cross section, because they can't hide quite as much with plastic, they have to use a higher cut in that cross section. So through and through already, this is a significantly better sneaker, <laughs> sneaker because of the better quality leather. But what about the rest of the shoe? Well, if you look at the inside, not talking about the little stash pocket, which is a really nice touch, but the internal components are basically the same across the board. Same lining as a regular Jordan, same tongue, same insole with a different branding on top, same lasting board. And as for the outsole, same outsole pattern, pretty obviously, same hardness at 60 Shore A, still cemented and so sidewall stitched. So I'm assuming everything is the same on the inside. And so to test that, we did the ball drop test. The regular pair of Jordan 1s bounced up 11 inches, whereas the Travis Scott bounced up 10 and a quarter inches. So pretty close, slightly less on the Travis Scott's. So it seems like the only difference really is in the upper materials and everything else seems to be the same. But to double check, let's cut these ridiculously priced sneakers in half, see what's on the inside and see if it is actually better and why the sneaker resale market is slowly dying. All right, we got it cut in half, which was a painful one because of the price of these things. So now let's see what's inside. So now that it's cut, we can see for sure that it's the exact same air unit, same foam, same lasting board, same construction, same everything through and through with this entire shoe. So is this actually better materials than a regular Jordan or is it just those mental gymnastics to justify spending a whole paycheck, probably two paychecks, on a pair of cheap sneakers? You know, it's not the best leather in the entire world. Is it worth the inflated prices? No, nobody, I don't even think anyone in the world thinks that. So now that we've looked at this, we've seen all the internal components, why is it that the resale market is collapsing? Well, when the majority of popular sneakers are just immediately bought up to be resold, it creates an artificial bubble that inevitably collapses because of three main reasons. One, the reselling doesn't actually create any additional value on top of what already was in the product. It actually decreases the value. Number two is there's no intrinsic value to this product above any other pair except for that tiny difference in leather. And then third, maybe the biggest one, fakes are indistinguishable because guess what? 
These are fake. And I'm willing to bet I caught a vast majority of you guys that had no idea that these were fakes. And that's because Nike uses such cheap materials, it's very easy to fake. And these aren't even that good of fakes. They're only like 30 bucks. And this fake scarcity game that Nike plays, along with letting bots buy up every single drop within seconds, it incentivizes people to make fakes, it incentivizes people to buy fakes, to a point where most people couldn't really tell if they got fakes or not. For instance, every single one of our videos we do that is about a hype sneaker, there's at least 20 or 30 people in the comments saying, bro, you got scammed, those are fakes. And there's a whole other conversation to be had about the lack of legitimate authentication that happens with the resale sites. So I'm not saying to support fakes. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy resold sneakers. I'm just saying look at the reality of the situation before you spend your entire month's worth of paychecks on a single sneaker. Just because somebody is trying to sell something for this much money and people say it's worth that much money, it doesn't mean that it is. And there's a lot of people wasting a lot of money on things that have no value, that will not retain their value, especially in this bubble that's been created by this hyper reselling market that everything gets bought up where the real consumers can't buy them at retail price and it's all just inflated. That is the definition of a bubble. So thanks for your support. I hope this video was a good demonstration of the insanity and the dangers of the resale market. But let me know what you think of the resale market. Maybe I'm off, maybe I'm missing an angle on this, but let me know if we got you on this one because I don't like tricking people for no reason, but I think there's a very valuable reality check and lesson even for me because it's not that I'm above this by any means. I am super susceptible to hype and excitement and I've wasted more money than I'd like to admit on stupid stuff like this. So. Uh, let me know what you think and thank you guys for your support. See ya.